Hello and welcome to this talk. This talk is called Computable Analysis and Verified Exact Field Computation in COG. My name is Holger and this is joint work with Mikhail Konechny and Florian Steinberg. Let me start this talk with a little bit of motivation. Our background is from the area of computable analysis. Computable analysis is an extension of classical computability and complexity theory to real numbers and other uncountable mathematical structures from analysis. Typical questions in this area are what kind of problems in analysis are computable, for example, by using the Turing machine model, and relating problems in analysis to classical complexity classes like PNP. However, the computational model in computable analysis is realistic in the sense that it can in principle be implemented on a computer. As such, software allows exact manipulation of real numbers. It is sometimes known as exact real computation. Algorithms from computable analysis come with a mathematical proof of correctness by design. For even higher reliability, it is desirable to have formal versions of these proofs verified by a proof system. Florian, one of, our co one of the co-authors of this work, is therefore developing a library for computable analysis in the COG proof system. In this work, we use this library, which is called Incon, to do verified exact real computation. The algorithms and definitions that we write can be extracted to executable Haskell code that we can use to do real number computations. Let me now give a, let, let me now talk a little bit about the computational model in computable uh, about the main definition about some of the main definitions from computable analysis and how they are implemented in the Incon library. Computable analysis is an area of classical mathematics, and as such, we assume that the, ex the existence of abstract non-computational mathematical spaces, such as, for example, the real numbers. Computational content is then added to the structures in a second step by encoding elements from such sets by elements of bare space. That is by functions from natural numbers to natural numbers. Formally, a representation for some abstract space X is just a partial surjective function from the bare space, that is from the space of functions from natural numbers to natural numbers to the space X. We further call elements, we further call elements of bare space that are mapped to some elements X, names for X, and call the pair of, a, of, a, of an abstract space and its representation a represented space. In the Incon library, um, represented spaces are defined similarly. However, instead of encoding everything explicitly by finite strings, we allow slightly more general encodings that make things more practical. So how is the representation defined in the Incon library? So, so a represented space in the Incon library consists of the following things. So the first thing is, um, an abstract an abstract base type x so this can be a, so so this can be any type this can this can this can be an arbitrary type in coq and usually this will not be this type will have a definition that is in so, in some sense not computational so that will somehow rely on so in coq that, that means it will somehow rely on some uh, non computational axioms so the definition of this type uses some non computational axioms then the second thing is we define a space of names, and uh, now for the space of names, we allow we allow um, we allow names to be arbitrary functions from some from some space Q to some space A. So, um, so and we, we call Q we call Q the questions and A and A answers. And the only requirement that we have on the on those on those types Q and A uh, is that they are countable. So we have to provide proofs that they are countable. And then finally, a partial surjective function from the space of names to X, which we call representation. And the idea is that um, that for that, that for elements of this abstract abstract space X, we have those we have those uh, countable we have those um, countable questions and answer types, and the name for such an element, such an element uh, of this abstract space, is just uh, is just a function that we can can ask questions of type Q, 
And that will give us, for, for, for such questions, will give us an answer of type A. And if we ask enough of the right questions, we will be able to approximate this X arbitrarily well. So this is how a represented space is defined in Incone. And let's, uh, let's look at some simple example. So the most basic example is probably um, the representation that encodes the real numbers that encodes real numbers by rational approximations. So in this representation, in this representation, uh, the, the question and answers are both just rational numbers. And the name for a real number is defined as a function that gets some, that gets some um, rational number epsilon. And uh, if it gets an epsilon that is larger than zero, then it will get it, then it will return an epsilon approximation to x. So using this function, we can we can get arbitrary well approximations of the real number x. Okay. A useful thing about those represented spaces is that they allow to automatically generate more complicated representations from existing ones. In Incount, for example. If we are given represented spaces x and y, we can automatically get definitions for, for standard representations for the following spaces. So one is, so for example, for the product space, for the coproduct, for infinite sequence over some, over some represented space, for the space of subsets, and for the space of continuous functions from x to y. Okay, so uh, representations now allow us to add uh, computational meaning to functions between some abstract mathematical spaces X and Y. So how is this done? So for this, we, we, used, we used the notion of a realizer. So what is a realizer? So a realizer for some function from a space, for, from, from abstract space X to Y uh, is, is just a function on, on is a function on the naming spaces of X. So the space, so, so this is the space from questions to answers of the space of the represented space X. And this is the space from questions of functions from questions to answers from the represented space Y. And uh, a realizer is now just a function that um, gets names for elements from this space X and then has to return um, names, for, names for elements that correspond to F of X. And in computable analysis, um, the notion of a function is sometimes too restrictive. Um, and we therefore also want to consider, we, we therefore also consider a less restrictive notion, namely that of a multi-valued function or multifunction for short. Uh, the idea behind the definition of a multi-valued function is that for, for that for one input, we allow, so, so for one input, we allow several possible outputs. So, so, so um, formally, we can define a multi-valued function just uh, as a relation or a set-valued function. But uh, in in some, it makes uh, it makes more. So, so it kind of makes more sense to think of it as a as a kind of non-deterministic function where, we, for a given input, there are several possible valid. So, for one input, there can be several possible return values, and we do not really know which return value that we get. So. So, so all of them are valid return values and we can just get one of them and this will be a correct answer. Uh, this is reflected in the notion of how a realizer is defined for multi-valued functions. The, the notion of a realizer can be extended to multi-valued functions by saying that a realizer for a multi-valued function is just a function uh, that, maps, that maps names for, for elements from, from this space X uh, to, to, to a name for any valid for any valid return value of uh, f of x. Um, so far, we have only seen the notion of representation applied to the real numbers. But uh, so this notion is uh, much more general. For example, we can also define computation, we can also use representations uh, to define computation over non discrete finite spaces. Uh, one such example, one such space that has, that has many that has many useful applications in the theory of computation is Chapinsky space, and Chapinsky space. So Chapinsky space is just a topological space which has uh, only two elements that we call top and bottom, and there is only one set that is open but not closed, namely the set only containing top. So we can define we cannot define we can uh, define a representation of this space 
that um, induces the same topolo topology um, by, by using the following definition. So, so the standard representation that we use for Sierpinski space is we let the questions, the questions are just the natural numbers. And the answers are the Booleans, so just true or false. And the name for an element of Sierpinski space is a function from the natural numbers to the Booleans that um, is defined as, so, so, and the representation is defined as follows. Uh, so, such a function is a name for top if and only if there exists a natural number that um, such that, so, so there is one natural number such that phi of n is equal to true. And the only name for bottom is the, uh, is the function that for any, that for all natural numbers always only returns false. And uh, so a possible interpretation of this space is that it models terminating and non-terminating computation. So if a computation, so if a computation terminates, then there is some finite time time. So there is there is some finite time m for which uh, for for which the computation stops. So then we can return true. So we know that it stopped. But if it doesn't stop, if the computation doesn't stop, then uh, we will never know, and we will always return false. Another useful finite space is the space of Kleene's three-valued logic. So. Um, so, so this is an this is kind of an extension to the, of the booleans. So we have like the booleans, we have uh, we, we have uh, zero and one, which correspond to false and true, and uh, we have a third element bottom that kind of stands for uh, undefinedness. And uh, so 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 so, so uh, this can be turned into this can be turned into a represented space by using the following representation. So again, uh, the questions are just the natural, the questions are again the natural numbers. And as answers, we use uh, zero, one, and the third element, none. And we define the representation as follows. So a name is a, a, name is a function from the natural numbers to zero, one, or none. And uh, um, we say it's a name for zero. If the first element that is different from none that this function returns is zero, we say it's a name for one if the first element that it returns is one, and we say it's a name for for bottom if this function only returns none. So this definition is kind of useful because we can often use it to kind of um, delay the Boolean decisions to some later point in time and to extend partial Boolean decisions uh, to total functions because uh, this additional natural number parameter m here. Um, so, so the way the representation is defined here um, allows us to kind of um, for some time say nothing, so return none, and uh, uh, just delay the decision to some time and then say either true or false. Or if there's no decision, so if this would not terminate at all, just um, always return none. So this can be used, this can often be used to extend um, partial, Boolean, partial Boolean functions to uh, total functions on the on the so, so partial Boolean functions can often be extended to total functions on the Kleinians. And one important such example is that we can use the Kleinians uh, to define a total uh, a, a total computable real comparison, which is defined as follows. So if uh, so, um, if x is less if uh, if x is not equal to y, then uh, it just returns the Boolean. It is just defined as the Boolean value, and this if x is equal to y, then it is defined as the bottom, as, as the bottom element. And if we, for example, have, if we, it can be seen that, for example, if we use the um, representation by rational approximations, the rational the, the rational representation for real numbers that we have seen on one of the uh, previous slides, then uh, this can be a, so, so so this function this function can be. A, so, so a realizer for this function, a computable realizer for this function can be easily defined. So, so if we now want to uh, use the Incon library to write some exact real arithmetic algorithms, the typical steps, what we have to do is the first thing uh, 
So the first thing we do is uh, we have we want to give an abstract mathematical description of the problem of the problem as a multifunction. For example, and so this is just an abstract mathematical description with no computational content. So this will, for example, use the axiomatic real numbers. So there's an axiomatic definition of the real numbers defined in Cox standard library that we can, for example, use for this. And then um, we uh, define a representation for the, or we uh, choose a representation for the real number. So of course we can, uh, so, so of course we don't have to do this every time. We, we don't have to do this every time, but we can just uh, define some representations of real numbers and then we use them all the time. So the, the second step is just choosing some representation for the real numbers. And then what we have to do is we, uh, we have to add some computational content by defining a computable function uh, on the naming space, so on the uh, so, so user on the naming space of this representation, so on the so on the space of um, so, so defining a computable function, where the input is a function from questions to answers of this representation, and the the output is also a, a function from questions to answers in this representation. And uh, well, in uh, so so I say computable here, but what this means in practice, because um, so, so Cox, Cox um, internal, uh, so Cox internal logic is already constructive. So instead of computable here, it often so so it usually what, what we usually do is just we define we, we define a function we define a function in Cox that doesn't rely on any in, on any external axioms or on any non-computational axioms, and then since the logic of Cox is constructive. Uh, this function will already be computable and we can execute it in Cock. So this is what we usually de do. So, um, and then the last step is uh, proving the correctness of this. So and this means that we prove that uh, this function that we defined here is actually a realizer for the multifunction that we defined in the first step. So in this sense, uh, how things are done in Incone is somehow similar to classical program verification in the sense that we have a constructive definition, so we have a computable definition of a program, and then we have a, we have a formal specification in terms of uh, in terms of the multifunction that this program is supposed to be a realizer of. So we have a, we have an abstract specification, and then finally. Uh, we, we proved that this program actually fulfills the specification, so the correctness proof, which also can use classical mathematical logic, and uh, uh, so, so, so finally give a correctness proof that the specification fulfills the specification that this program fulfills the specification. Or in our in our setting, this means the correctness proof is proving that. Uh, the proving that uh, proving that a function we defined is actually a realizer of the the abstract multifunction that we defined. However, in this way, uh, so whenever we want to define some real function, we have to give a very low level implementation that heavily depends on that heavily depends on the underlying representation. Um, so we therefore want to do things a little bit more generally. And uh, so this idea is kind of inspired by, um, by, by more practical frameworks of exact, real, of exact real computation that, for example, are implemented in uh, C++ or Haskell, so non-verified implementations of exact real computation. Because in such frameworks, they are usually, so what they do, they usually provide some basic they provide some basic operations on real numbers, like, uh, like 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 arithmetic operations and so on, that can be used that can be combined to define more complicated programs. And uh, we wanted to define something similar in Coq, built on the Incon library. So um, we call this uh, we call this a structure computable reals, and this structure uh, does something similar, namely it provides some basic. It provides some basic operations on the real numbers. So, um, so, so I mean, what I mean by this is um, the, the defining, so instantiating this structure means to provide realizers of those basic operations, and then we can use those. And then we can we can use those basic operations in more high-level programs. So, can combine those basic operations and then. And then do well. Then do some more high-level proofs where we where we use those basic operations and combine them 
to more complicated functions and write the proofs independently of the underlying representation. So it also allows us to easily um, switch, so e easily exchange, easily exchange um, different representations and so on. So what are the basic operations that we use? So the following operations turned out to be useful. So the first thing is we want to have realizers for basic arithmetic operations. So addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication and division. Then an implementation of the efficient limit. So the efficient limit is a function that takes a sequence of real numbers and returns a real number. Uh, that returns a real that, that gets a sequence of real numbers and then ret returns a real number and this real number. So so uh, the return value of the sequence is if this sequence gets um, uh, of this function is if this uh, function gets as input a sequence a sequence of real numbers that is efficiently Cauchy. So that means it efficiently converges to some real number x. So that means uh, the i's the i's term of this uh, sequence the i's term of the sequence is at most two to the minus i far away from its limit. Then we will return the limit of the sequence. We also want to provide a realizer for the Kleinian comparison function that we have seen on the previous one of the previous slides. And also we want to have some operations for easily um, for easily doing input and output of real numbers. So we want to we want to implement a function that we can give uh, that we can give to um, integers m and e, and then map to the dyadic regression m, m to the two to the minus e. And we want to be able to um, output rational approximations. So we, we want to have a realizer for the multi for the multifunction that gets a real number x and the rational and uh, um, an error bound epsilon and returns um, and returns some rational approximation of x with error at most epsilon. So um, in our current work, we already instantiated this um, computable real structure with two different representations. The first one is the simple rational representation that uses rational approximations that, had be, that we have seen as an example uh, on one of the previous slides. And there's, uh, but uh, so, so working with rational numbers is usually not very efficient. And therefore we also implemented an alternative representation that is inspired by efficient frameworks for, by, by efficient non-verified frameworks of exact real computation. And this is based on interval arithmetic. So instead of using rational approximations, uh, we use sequences of intervals with dyadic endpoints. So we use sequences of intervals with dyadic endpoints to um, approximate uh, the real the approximate real numbers arbitrarily well. So the formal definition of the representation is that uh, the questions the questions are the natural numbers, which just means we have sequences, and the outputs are um, and the outputs are of some interval type. So intervals uh, intervals with the uh, interval type of, of intervals with dyadic endpoints. And then we say then we say such a sequence of interval, such a sequence of intervals is a name for some real number x. If x is contained in each of those intervals, and if the intervals uh, so if we if we increase the precision parameter n, then the intervals will get arbitrarily small. And uh, to implement this in Coq, we didn't have to start from scratch because there's already a huge uh, library for doing interval arithmetic in Coq, which is called the Coq interval library, and the uh, this library prov provides already many basic operations on intervals, such, for, such as, for example, addition and multiplication and so on, that we can, can use to write the realizers for operations, for, for the basic operations um, for this representation. In the paper, we give a larger example of how those operations can be used. Uh, namely, we give the example of, uh, to, of computing the square root using the well-known Heron's method. method. Uh, but for time reasons, let me here intro just introduce a, a simpler example. And the motivation for this example is that comparison of real numbers in exact real computation is often problematic because uh, Boolean comparison Boole so Boolean comparison can only be implemented as a partial function because it is undecidable if two real numbers are equal. And the Kleinian comparison doesn't really resolve this. Uh, because in the Kleinian comparison, if two numbers are equal, we return bottom, and the name for bottom does not really give any information. 
So uh, in exactly computation, uh, therefore often another form of uh, comparison is used, um, a multi-valued version of comparison, which is called soft comparison. And it is defined as follows. So it is a multi-function and it takes, uh, that takes, uh, two, that takes the two real numbers that should be compared. And additionally, a natural number parameter and maps to the booleans. And uh, so true is a valid return value for this multi-function if, uh, if and only if x is less than y. And false is a valid return value for this multifunction if and only if y is less than x plus two, 2 to the minus n. So, so this will always return at least one, of one Boolean value. But there's a small interval of, uh, of size 2 to the minus n where both, uh, where, where both true and false are valid return values of this function. And we can define this, this form of comparison by using our basic operations. Namely, this can be defined from the cleaning comparison. Um, because if we, if we replace those tests here by the, by, by the cleaning comparison tests, then we know since always one of, at least one of them will be true. So uh, if we search in the name, if we search in parallel in both, if we do the cleaning comparison and then search in parallel in the names, the search, the, the search will always terminate and find out which one of those is true. So we can always return a value. Okay, so at, let me end this talk with a small conclusion and some future work. So um, what we have seen is that the Incon library can be used to implement real number computation in COC and the proofs in the style of computable analysis. And uh, we have just given a simple implementation, but the one, so the simple implementation that is based on interval arithmetic, um, we tried it with a few examples and have seen that it's already quite efficient. So comparable to non-verified implementations of exact real computation. And in the future, we want to do a few things. So for example, we want to look at, um, not just at operations on real numbers, but on, for example, we, we have started on looking at more complicated spaces. So for example, what we have looked at is the space of analytic functions and then so an interesting operation to do that would be something like ODE solving. So this is the end. Thank you very much for listening.